for we are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. For a few moments, I want to encourage you from the subject, locked out, but locked in. Locked out, but still locked in. And for a thing, as believers, you can navigate the obstacles of life with faith, gratitude, and a commitment to fulfilling God's purpose for your lives. Like that but still locked in. My brothers and my sisters, being locked in or having what my father called Christ focus in the life of the disciple means being fully committed and completely dedicated to following the teachings and examples of Christ Jesus. Being locked in involves centering our thoughts, centering our actions and our decisions around the principles that we find in God's Word. And while centering our thoughts and actions, we should be doing our best to live lives that reflect the values and the love of Jesus Christ as we engage in the good work. Brother Slater, this locked in mentality includes prioritizing faith. Making time for prayer. Serving others without looking for special honors. And embracing the moral and ethical standards set forth in God's holy word. Being locked in, Brother Woodard, as a disciple means allowing Christ to be the guiding force in our lives, shaping every aspect of our beings with his teachings and by his grace. See, the songwriter said, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. See, I once was lost, but now I'm found I was blind, but now I see. As we strive, Mother Williams, to be locked in and attentive to the good work God is leading us to do, many times we face unexpected issues. Yes, sir. And some of these issues try to keep us from maximizing our potential when it comes to fulfilling our purpose in doing the good work. Mm -hmm. And we understand that this good work is the work, Deacon Belches, that the Lord has predestined for us to do and to fulfill. Sometimes, as we pursue the righteousness of God, we find ourselves dealing with people, situations, and sometimes we find ourselves dealing with ourselves. And yes, sometimes we can be our own 
where it's imminent. And we're trying, and it's trying to prevent us from moving forward and maximizing our potential in God. However, I've come back here to let you know that you can stay locked in even when you've been locked out. The songwriter says, under his wings, I am safely abiding. Through the nights deep, though the night deepens and the tempest grow wild, I can still trust him. Because I know that God can keep me. Do I got some folks that know one today that God is a keeper? God has redeemed me. And yes, I am his child. Being locked in, my brothers and my sisters, requires us to have faith. Furthermore, not only must we have faith, but we must have a growing faith. That means we have to feed our faith daily. Furthermore, we understand that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But when it comes to being locked in, James, the half-brother of our Lord, lets us know that faith by itself, if not accompanied by actions, is dead. We normally say faith without works is dead. But looking at being locked in, James highlights the idea that true faith is demonstrated through actions and works. So even though there are barriers that try to lock us out, when we activate our growing faith, we understand that not only must we be locked in, but being locked in means we are standing firm and ready to respond and execute the good work God is calling us to do. And if you don't know, now you know God is calling you to do a good work. Yes, sir. This means that we must be ready and willing to move past those barriers that life presents us with by the power of Almighty God and by the aid of the Holy Spirit. And we understand that these barriers, even though they cause us to grow, they've been placed to hinder our progress. In order to stay locked in, and move past the barriers that try to hinder our progress. Doc, we must remember the words of Gabriel in Luke chapter 1, 37. The scripture reminds us that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Uh -huh. So let me throw this in parenthetically. When you add God to the equation, you know that everything is going to be all right. The job situation. Add God to the equation. Everything is going to be all right. Sickness. Add God to the equation. Everything will be all right if you got trouble in your home. Add God to the equation. I mean, truly add God to the equation. That's don't say you add him to the equation, but you got to add him right to the equation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everything 
will work out for your good. So even when we are faced with challenges and obstacles, we have a great comfort. We have a great comfort in knowing simply that God is with us. If we're struggling, God is with us. If we're broken, God is with us. When we get a little hungry, God is with us. When our money gets funny and our change gets strange, God is still with us and God is still in the blessing business. But see, it's our mandate as we navigate life and as long if you got a, as you got a life force in your body, you are navigating the challenges of life. But as we navigate, Ray, we must have a steady and consistent focus on the promises of God. And we do this by being, by remaining rooted in prayer, meditating on scripture, and seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And we can stay locked in to God's will for our lives and continue to press forward doing the good work he has called us to do. Let us therefore HMBC not get discouraged by the unexpected obstacles that come in our way. If you haven't had any obstacles to come down your street yet, tell your neighbors they keep on living. <laughs> because the obstacles are coming. But we have to understand that God has an unconditional love for us. And this unconditional love for us, Deacon is glad it has no end. Yeah. And understand that being locked in, listen to me closely to the Lord, it's not about being confined. Uh -huh. It's not about being restricted. But rather, it's about being rooted and grounded and established in the truth of God. So I encourage you, no matter what comes your way, to stay strong, All right. <laughs> stay faithful, All right. and stay locked in to the path that God has set before you. And continue to do the good work that God has called us to do. The songwriter said, just keep the faith. And never cease to pray. See, if you want to be locked in on today, just keep the faith. And never cease to pray. If you want to do the good work, just keep your faith. And never cease to pray. Just walk up right, call a new day and night. Because the promise is that he'll be there. Amen. No matter what you're going through. All right. On today, he'll be there. Whatever trouble you're dealing with, he'll be there. Whatever's coming down your street, he's already at your, at your door. He'll be there. And there's no need for us to worry. The book of Ephesians. In the New Testament of the Bible is traditionally traditionally attributed to the Apostle Paul. Furthermore, the title which is to the Ephesians is found in many early manuscripts. Dickens Woods it indicates that the letter was written 
to the church of Ephesus the Lord. and the surrounding dependent region. The most important thought, and I think you got it by now, in our text on today, yes. is that no matter what comes our way, Hallelujah. God created each of us in Christ Jesus to be locked in as we join him in the good work he does. Amen. And we must understand that the good work that God has for us to do, we better be doing it. I want you to walk with me for a moment. In the 10 verses, verses 1 through 10, Paul presents the past, the present, and the future of the believer. He highlights what we were, what we are, and what we will be. Amen. In this presentation, Paul gives us six aspects of salvation. First and foremost, we have salvation from sin. Yes which characterizes life before Christ. Amen. Without me. Yes. Second, we have salvation through love. All right. This teaches us that God's mercy is rich, All right. immeasurable, and unlimited. Number three, we have salvation into unto life. Through our study on discipleship, we understand that one who is dead in sin needs to be needs to be made alive in Christ. This is why, through salvation, Jesus Christ gives life to the spirit of the receiver. Number four, we have to understand this one. We have salvation with the purpose. And the purpose is not just to come to church. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. We must understand that salvation has a purpose for us yeah. and for God. My brothers and my sisters, I want us to understand that the immediate result of salvation is to be raised up with him yes. and to be seated with him yes. in heavenly places. Yes. Just as Jesus, I want you to check this out. Just as Jesus instructed the people to unbind Lazarus after raising him from the dead, we must recognize are y'all with me? Uh -huh. All right. That living bound by the things of death hinder us from walking in our purpose. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we need to be unbound yeah. through the power of salvation in Christ Jesus to fulfill our purpose. Fifth, we have salvation through faith. And six, we have salvation unto good works. It is important, Deacon and Simpson, to note that the first aspect is in the past. The next four pertain to the present. And the last aspect refers to the future. Okay. As we strive, to be locked in, we need to understand that as we strive 
to do the good work God has called us to do, we will face opposition. And we will face barriers. Understand this. While good works play no role in gaining our salvation, Amen. good works are important in demonstrating and living out our salvation. Amen. All right now, Jesus states Praise. in John 15, 8, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Amen. 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 Good works Good work. right. in the midst right. of adversity yeah. do not earn our salvation or brownie points. But good works rather proves the genuineness yeah. of our faith and our discipleship. Right there. Right there. Right there. When God's people uh -huh. are locked in and engage in good works, they bear sweet, edible fruit. Uh -huh. All right. And this fruit is for the kingdom of God yeah. and it brings glory to his name. See, the good works that we do are not for our glory. Right. The good works are not for pats on the back. Yeah. The good works are not for accolades from the crowd, but the good works are to and for the glory of Almighty God. Yeah. Despite struggles, unforeseen issues, and obstacles, let us strive to do that good work in excellence. And before, check this out, and before we can engage in the good work, we must first, he must first do his good work on us. Amen. Come on. If we are to walk in humility and in the love of Christ, we must allow him to do his good work in us. If we desire to be vessels of light in a world clothed with darkness, we must allow him to do his good work in us. If we are to put on the armor of God and stand firm against the schemes of the enemy, we must allow him to do his good work in us. Amen. If we are going to be living sacrifices holy and pleasing unto God we must allow him to do his good work in us. The songwriter says, have you tried Jesus in all your searching? Have you tried Jesus for peace within? If you want answers my brothers and my sisters to your life's problems Simply try Jesus and he will set you free. All right. So with all that said, when we as believers are locked in, uh -huh. how should we respond to barriers that we come across in life that are constructed to hinder our progress well. in fulfilling his purpose. Number one, there should be a recognition of God's grace. All right. When acknowledging the grace of God, which we do not deserve, our reaction should be to deeply understand and absorb what God has done for us through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes yes, sir. we need to sit and reflect and deeply understand 
and absorb all that God has done for us. This understanding of what God has done for us should propel us towards developing stronger faith. And this faith guides us toward the holiness characterized by God. Yeah. Tell your neighbor holiness is still right. Holiness is still right. In essence, Amen. when we grasp hold of God's grace revealed through his mercy and profound love for us, our natural response should be obedience and worship. All right. Point number one, we should recognize God's grace. But not only should we recognize God's grace, but point number two, there ought to be gratitude for God's work. Mm. All right. As believers, It's imperative that we recognize that the life that we've been given and the opportunity to minister are gifts from God. Hallelujah. And we should receive them with appreciation. Amen. Understand that this life and this ministry that God has blessed us with is not of our own making, nor do we deserve it. Therefore, we acknowledge that our natural abilities and the blessing of salvation come from God and God alone. Amen. In response to God's provisions, we should approach his work with reverence and gratitude, preparing ourselves for the task that he has specifically designed for us. And we must understand that the work that he has given us to do is for us to do. The work that he gave Michelle is not the work that he gave Moses. Amen. All right. The work he gave Carter is not the work he gave Moses. Amen. The work he gave Slater is not the work for Moses. Moses got to do what God has called Moses to do. Amen. Slater got to do what God called Slater to do. Carter has to do what God called Carter to do. And Bell just has to do what God called her to do. Amen. So there should be a recognition okay. of God's grace. There should be gratitude for God's work. All right. And last but not least, point number three, there must be a commitment to God's plan. Commitment. It's crucial that we understand that through Christ we have been transformed. All right. See, I don't know about you, but I ain't what I used to be. That's right. Amen. 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 Jelani, I don't move how I used to move. I don't speak in tongues like I used to speak. But God has transformed me and changed me by the blood of the Lamb. Do I got some folks up in here, up in here, who have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb? Yeah. And for this reason, that we have been transformed, we've been transformed for a purpose. Yes. God didn't pick us up and turn us around just so we can look good on Sunday morning. Amen. God didn't pick us up and turn us around so we can wear fancy hats at the anniversary. Amen. But God picked us up and he turned us around 
for the good work that he has called us to do. And this good work is an individual work and a collective work. Therefore, it's our responsibility. Say our responsibility. Our responsibility. To wholeheartedly and devotedly accept the responsibilities that God has given us on our Holy Ghost to do this. And as we accept the responsibilities, we are to approach the responsibilities with diligence and dedication with the mindset that we're going to do the work in excellence. Amen. So there should be a recognition of God's grace. There ought to be gratitude for God's work. There must be a commitment to God's plan. The songwriter says, perfect submission. Yes. All is at rest. Amen. I in my Savior am happy and I'm blessed. Hallelujah. See, I'm watching and I'm waiting. I'm looking above. I'm filled with his goodness. I'm lost in his love. If we're going to be locked in and focus on his holy word, we must be filled with his goodness Hallelujah. and lost in his love. If our desire is to do the good work that he has called us to do, we must be filled with his goodness and lost in his love. If our desire is a higher level of servitude, I'm going to say it one more time, we must be filled with his goodness yeah. and lost in his love. If our desire is to one day see him face to face, we must be filled with his goodness yeah. and lost in his love. If our desire is to hear well done, thou good and faithful servant, we must be filled with his goodness and lost in his love. If our choice is to be anchored in his grace and in his love, if our desire is to be able to navigate the stormy seas of life, if we desire to sow seeds of love on today that will bloom on tomorrow, we must be filled with his goodness and lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Understand on today to be locked in we must be focused on his goodness. To be locked in we must be distributors of his grace his mercy and his love. Amen. To be locked in, we must be hearers and doers of his word. To be locked in, we must love him yeah. and love one another. Yeah. To be locked in, we must be ready to stand yeah. and we'll stand the fiery darts yeah. of the evil one. Yeah. To be locked in, yeah. we must count it all joy when we endure trials yeah. and tribulations. To be locked in, well. we must not remain idle. Yeah. We must not remain stagnant. Whoa. See, when we are locked in, yeah. we are allowing God to be our refuge. Yeah our strength and a very present help. We are moving when God says move. We are doing when
what God says do. We don't do what God says no. We speak what he says speak. We strive to love like he loves. See, my brothers and my sisters, it may be in the valley where countless dangers hide. It may be in the sunshine that I in peace about. But this one thing I know, if it be dark or if it be fair, if Jesus goes with me, my brothers and my sisters, I'll go anywhere. There may be turbulence and uncertainty. If Jesus is with me, see, I'm going to go. There may be haters. There may be naysayers. But if Jesus is with me, I'm going to go. Folk may not like me. Sometimes I may feel a little uneasy. But if Jesus is with me, Sister Rosemary, I'm going to go. There will be times of chaos. There will be times of confusion. There will be moments of adversity. There will be times of despair. Sometimes that will cloud my mind and darkness seems to loom through the trials and the tribulations of life. See, if Jesus goes with me, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, because my faith looks up to thee, thou lamb of Calvary, be our savior, divine. See, when life brings disappointment, my faith is looking up when I feel like throwing in the towel. My faith is looking up when loved ones have let me down. My faith is looking up when I'm suffering in my silence. My faith is looking up when my mind is uneasy and I can't seem to rest. My faith is looking up sometimes I get disappointed. But my faith is looking up when I'm struggling in myself. My faith is looking up when my past tries to infiltrate my present. My faith is looking up when sickness tries to take over my body. My faith is looking up when folk leave me for dead. My faith is looking up, see my brothers and my sisters. I can't forget the moments when I was sad. Reverend Slater, my head was hanging down and my soul was feeling bad. All I could say is, Lord, take my heart. Jesus hurt me. Jesus saved me. And he gave me a new start. He's sweet. I know. He's sweet. I know. Storm clouds may rise. Strong wind may begin to blow. But I'm going to tell the world wherever I go. See, I, I found the Savior, and He's the sweet I know. In a moment of being burdened and broken, we can rejoice because we've found the Savior when we are poor and destitute with those holy hands because we've found the Savior in the midst of hard times. Praise is in order. We've found the Savior when sickness comes upon us, when we get stressed and we get weary, when we don't have much and little seems a lot, when we are all alone and no one cares. I don't know about you, but I found the Savior and He He 
Yeah. 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 But we have believers. I'm locked in. How should we respond? The barrier that come across, that we come across in life that are constructed to hinder our progress in fulfilling our purpose. It's very simple. Number one, there should be a recognition of God's grace. Number two, there ought to be gratitude for God's work. And number three, there must be a commitment to God's plan. Sometimes, we're going to be locked out. But Deacon Woods, no matter what the situation may be, we still got to be locked in. We got to keep pressing. We got to be locked in. There's somebody depending on you. We got to be locked in. There's somebody that needs to hear the gospel story. We got to be locked in. Trouble don't last always. But he's sweet. I know. The door of the church are open.